My dear friends, we are very happy to introduce this family altar series before you. And today, we have come to the house of Gilbert de Souza and his family from Saligaon. And we are very happy to have this reflection before their family altar. Descriptions regarding the family altar will be given to you later on towards the end of this video. So stay tuned. My dear friends, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 40, St. Peter tells us something that is very, very important. After the resurrection of Jesus, as St. Peter was addressing the crowd, he tells them that they need to repent and they need to be baptized. And he makes one very important statement in Acts chapter 2, verse 40. And he says, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Very true, my dear friends. Let me illustrate with an example. You know, I wanted to refer to a PowerPoint that I had prepared some time back. And I, when I went to my laptop, I checked that particular PowerPoint and I tried to open it. The PowerPoint was not opening. And there was a message that came up there and that said, this file is corrupted and cannot be opened. This file is corrupted and cannot be opened. So my dear friends, here I had a PowerPoint file with me that I had prepared, but in spite of me having it, I could not open it because it was corrupted. It's the same thing that happens to each one of us, my dear friends, when we allow ourselves to be corrupted, then we refuse God. We do not allow God to work in us. So though we are in the presence of God, we don't allow God to work in our lives because we have become corrupted like this particular PowerPoint file. Let us keep this in mind. It's a very important message for us. We need to save ourselves from this corrupt generation. Now, let me reflect together with you. What is it that corrupts us? What is it that corrupts us? We have a very important message in the Word of God. In Mark chapter 7, verses 20 to 23, we read it as follows. And Jesus went on to say, It is what comes out of a person that makes him unclean. For from the inside, from a person's heart, come the evil ideas which lead him to do immoral things, to rob, kill, commit adultery, be greedy, and do all sorts of evil things, deceit, indecency, jealousy, slander, pride, and folly. All these evil things come from inside a person and make him unclean. So my dear friends, in other words, Jesus is telling us that what makes a person unclean, what corrupts a person, comes from within him. We have the whole list before us in the Word of God. All this pride and jealousy and envy, it all comes from inside. And now, my dear friends, what corrupts our families? Today, what is it that is corrupting our families? There are so many things, but what is it that is corrupting our families? Let me give you an example. You know, there was one teacher who was telling an incident that happened. Yesterday we began the 10th standard exams. Our students began their 10th standard exams. We have been praying for them. And in their particular school, which is a center for this 10th standard exams, yesterday being the first day of the exams, you know, uh, there were all children all around. They were preparing themselves. They were studying themselves. It was before the exam paper began. And the principal told this particular teacher, see there are some students outside call them inside and let them come in and let them prepare. What are they doing outside? So they are here to answer the exams, bring them in. So this teacher went outside the compound and she wanted to call the students inside. But when she went there, what did she see? The students who were about to answer their 10th standard exams were actually with their mobile phones. And they were chatting, they were talking, they were laughing. Here inside, there were all students preparing, but those students who were supposed to answer their 10th standard exams were, just before the 10th standard paper, they were fooling outside with their mobile phones. I don't want to say that it's the mobile phone that is corrupting our families, but my dear friends, inappropriate and uncontrolled use, abusive use of the mobile phone is what is really, really spoiling our families today, and especially our children and our youth. There are so many doubts in married life because of the mobile phone. 
I'm not saying it should not be used, but it should be in control because that is what is corrupting families today. There are many other things that are corrupting families, but this is one of the main things in today's context. So my dear friends, speaking about this corrupt generation, let me go a little further. What corrupts our vocation, holy vocation? Today we are praying for priest, especially during the Tuesday service, we are praying for priest. What is it that is corrupting uh, vocations, holy vocations? You know, there was one boy who once came and told me that he would like to join the seminary and be a priest. And I was very happy. I went to visit him and I spoke to his mother and I said, see your son, he's showing interest, he would like to be a priest. And his mother, she admitted and she said, Father, it is true, he's showing a lot of interest to be a priest. But I myself, being his mother, I am putting obstacles before him. I am putting blocks before him. I am trying to discourage him. My dear friends, at least this mother admitted it. But this is what corrupts vocations today, holy vocations today. When within the family, we try to stifle that vocation, we try to suffocate that vocation, we don't allow our children to choose to work in God's vineyard. So my dear friends, speaking about corruption, let us keep this central message in mind. In Acts chapter 2 verse 40, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. In the first illustration, I had told you about that PowerPoint file that could not be used. The message came, this file is corrupted and cannot be opened. But then there was an option for me. When I looked little deeper, there was another option that said, open and repair. Open and repair feature was there. When I used that open and repair feature, I could use that file. That file that could not be opened could actually be opened and repaired. So my dear friends, though you know we may be corrupted due to sin, the devil has corrupted us, but still God can use us. God can repair us if we open up ourselves to him. If we allow God to work in our lives, definitely though we are corrupted, God can still use us. So as the feature came open and repair, let us open ourselves to the Lord. Let us remember corruption is like a cancer today. It eats within us and if we don't check on this corruption, my dear friends, our lives, our families, our children, everything will end up with this corrupt generation. So let us take the message of the word of God today to heart and let us work on it. Let us introspect into our own lives and our families and let us pray for God's blessings upon each one of us. Hi everyone, I am Gianna. This is a family altar where we say our daily prayers. My name is Elsa. I'm Gilburn's mother. Initially, the altar was in the hall, which my mother-in-law shifted it here because she said everyone, whoever came, they used to talk all rubbish. So out of respect, it was shifted to the living room. And today, they are still here in the living room. We've got a special uh, bone of St. Donard, which is very, very precious. It's especially used for children when they are frightened. You have to wash it with the second water of the rice and give the child that water to drink and a little bit and make a sign of the cross on the forehead and the rest of the body. And the child keeps calm. We've also got a very, very old statue of St. Francis Xavier. We treasure it with great devotion. <laughs> 